Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today we're gonna to talk about how to set the threshold for your compressor, but first. Nothing I teach you in this video will be able to help you if you don't already have a mixing system. If that's you, stop what you're doing and download my free five-step mix guide. It'll teach you my simple but powerful system for getting great mixes every time. Go to fivestepmix.com to get your copy. What'd you think? Did you like it? I made my own commercial for myself. I'm going to pay myself. Add dollars. Anyway, has this ever happened to you? You've been working on a project. Let's imagine this This is a plug-in. And you figure out there's something you want to adjust on a track. So you pull up the plug-in, you start turning knobs, and you're like rubbing your chin. You're like, oh, yeah, that sounds better. Oh, let me go fix this. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 that's better, that's better. And, you know, an embarrassing amount of time later, you realize, oh, I was turning the wrong, I was adjusting the wrong plug-in. What I was doing wasn't doing anything to the sound I was listening to. I was making it all up in my head. Yeah, I do that more than I care to admit. The other day, I was in a recording session with my buddies Tim and Joel, and I switched guitars to play a part, and I couldn't get sound. And I went through the checklist, making sure my inputs were right. Maybe I need to restart something, blah, blah, blah. Turns out the guitar wasn't plugged in. Literally, the cable was just lying on the floor. So it happens. But those things are, I'm fine with those things because it's just me being an idiot. But when it happens because you don't realize how the particular thing you're working on works, that can be like legitimately frustrating. So what I mean is, Let's say, like, let's take a look at this. I've got a compressor here on a drum bus, okay? And if I hit play now, I've got it muted so you can't hear it right now, there's no compression happening. And so then you might come in, if you're not sure what to do with a compressor, you might adjust the ratio up and down, you might mess with the attack time, and you, th you might, might listen and say, oh yeah, that sounds better. You haven't done anything because it's actually not compressing yet. So it's not doing anything to the sound. The way to get it to compress is to make sure the ratio is something higher than one. So this is two to one. And then bring the threshold down until we see some gain reduction. What does that look like? In Studio One, that looks like this little orangey, yellowy meter here that is going down, showing us how much the compressor is turning things down. Okay. That's, you probably already knew that, but a question that comes across a lot, and I saw this recently, so I wanted to make a video about it is where do we set the threshold? Cause I could set it all the way down here. I could set it up here. Um, once it starts compressing, how far down do I go? Um, and the first thing I will say is if you have someone telling you always set the threshold to negative 25 decibels, run away from that person as quickly as you can, because that's a completely arbitrary number. It depends on how loud the track is, how loud you recorded it, how quietly you recorded it, which if you follow my advice, you're recording at nice conservative levels. So all those, you know, mix by number approaches where they tell you exactly where to set the settings won't help you at all. And they're not helpful. Anyway, uh, that's a, that's a tangent I don't want to get on. But once you do bring the threshold down to the point where some compression is happening, how far is far enough? Well, I'll answer that in just a second, but we also need to know that there's more than one way to increase the amount of compression that's happening. There's lots of ways, but I'm going to show you three in this particular example. Particular example. So I'm going to start playback over. So right now, I've got the threshold down to about negative 33, and I can see I'm getting 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction here. See how that's hitting the negative 6? Now, one way I can increase compression is by increasing the ratio. So check that out. Went from 3 to 6 up to like... 12 or more dB of gain reduction. So what we've done is said, when the signal does cross the threshold, I want you to slap the crap out of it. And if we bring it way down, you can see there's less and less compression until we get to a one-to-one -one ratio, which is essentially no compression. Nothing's happening. Um, which, I'm not sure why that even exists, but it's there. Okay, so if we're at two-to-one, and we go up with the threat with the ratio, we get more compression. Okay. Another thing we can do is let's say we bring the threshold down a little more, and let's say we bring the attack time down to something really, really fast. Now it's not as obvious, but you can see the compressors change the way it's compressing. It's like a lot more bouncy. And if I bring it up and make it really a long attack, check it out. There's less compression here. So with a really long attack time, it's compressing less. And as I bring the attack time up 
or down and make it faster and faster and faster, we're getting more compression that way. So with, just within this little window that you can see on the screen right now, we've got three knobs that essentially affect how much compression is happening. So what do we, what's a boy to do with all that information? Well, first of all, I would say just be careful that your attack times aren't by default super, super fast. I like to start mine around 20, 25 or so, and then work from there. So I would say start with like 20 to 50 as your attack time. Then choose a ratio. Two to four is always a good spot. The ratio is fairly arbitrary because if I want more compression, I could always bring the threshold down rather than just the ratio. So the threshold, I didn't say this, is the third knob that we can turn to increase or decrease compression. So my general rule of thumb is I've got an idea of how much compression I want to hear in the signal. And so I go, if I want something to be pretty aggressive, I'll probably set the ratio to like four to one and set the attack time wherever is appropriate for that particular piece of audio. I'm well, can't get into that in this video. And then I'll bring the threshold down until I'm getting about the amount of compression that I want. So usually if it's like a vocal, for example, I might want it to be getting 10 to 12 decibels of gain reduction. For drums, it might be more like three to six. So let's actually listen to these drums here. I'll set the attack time a little slower, ratio four to one, and let's pull the threshold down until it's a good amount of compression. Here we go. As soon as I stopped it, the song stopped. That's embarrassing. Here we go. Yeah, I like that amount of compression. It hits that snare drum pretty well, also hits the kick drum, and it's about 6 dB. So to me, that's a good starting point where it's not overly compressed. It doesn't cause a lot of problems, but it gets you some nice, good kind of aggressive compression. So the number is kind of what I'm looking at more so the sound than the number, but I generally know if I'm only getting two, three dB of gain reduction, I'm not hearing much happening. If I'm getting three to six, okay, I'm getting some stuff. That's a good medium aggressive range of compression. If I'm getting 10 or more dB of gain reduction, it's starting to get pretty aggressive. And there's places where I'll do that. Um, like on just a snare drum by itself on a lead vocal, if it's a pretty aggressive song, different places where I will go that route. Um, and each place kind of has its own purpose. But that is how I go about setting the threshold. I pull it down until I'm getting the amount of compression that I want, but I'm making sure that my attack settings aren't too fast to where it's giving me a false reading and that my ratio settings aren't too low to where I'm not getting much compression. Two to one to four to one, somewhere in the 20 to 50 range on the attack time is a good starting point. Bring the threshold down until you're getting an amount of comp compression that sounds good to you and seems visually like it's about right. Then you can tweak the ratio and the attack and even the threshold to find that happy medium where it sounds best. All right, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.